Welcome back to Sound Bites, a show about good people doing good things in the food and drink industry. This past weekend, I had the pleasure of going to Fox Harbor Resort near Wallace, Nova Scotia, for a dinner featuring wines of the iconic wineries of British Columbia, paired with local ingredients crafted into delicious dishes by the team at Fox Harbor. Before dinner, though, I sat down with Bram Baldwin. Bram is the head sommelier of the iconic wineries of British Columbia, and we talked about BC wines, the wineries, and his ideas about the flavors of Nova Scotia. So sit back and enjoy my discussion with Bram Baldwin. So tell me a little bit about your role as a sommelier and working, at, you know, in British Columbia. Okay, well, in British Columbia, and especially if you go to the Okanagan Valley, uh, about 86% of all uh, vines, grapes are coming from the Okanagan Valley. And so being positioned right in the middle, looking after Mission Hill for a very long time, um, you get to meet and host lots of people from all over, international guests. Uh, lots of locals, of course, as well, but we have uh, an, a, a growing reputation and it attracts lots of guests from all over. And so hosting guests, um, the joke is a little bit in the summer you come to the winery and as soon as the season is coming slower, slowly to an end, uh, we like to bring the winery to you. And then part of the iconic wineries, uh, there is also Martin's Lane and Checkmate Winery and that is uh, part of the service that we'll be providing tonight. Amazing, and so, um, but you're not from Canada, obviously. So really? tell, so tell us a little bit about where you're from, and how did, you, how did you actually, and what made you decide to, to kind of uproot yourself and, and come to Canada? Very long story, very interesting as well, but I'll keep it short. Uh, born and raised in the Netherlands, so Dutch, and uh, did my wine studies back in Bordeaux in France. Learned a lot. Was uh, loving the world of wine so much. Started to travel more. And then about 10 years ago, I came into Canada, backpacking pretty well, and I found out that I was Canadian. And after a little while, um, I considered to come back here, did all the paperwork that had to be done, and worked in some Michelin star restaurants to get experience, kept traveling, and I decided to come back here. And as soon as I landed, I was thinking about going to Vancouver or Toronto for a job in um, high-end restaurants or part of the same industry and I landed by friends close to the Okanagan Valley. Didn't know that much about it but I was very pleased and surprised with what was happening out there. Being part of the wine world in the Okanagan Valley, uh, there's a kind of a community, lots of farmers, lots of producers, lots of winemakers, viticultures and uh, people that are part of this industry that are very proud of what they are farming, producing and presenting and within no time I decided I wanted to be part of that, and ever since then I uh, started working for Amazing. iconic wineries. Amazing. So, I mean, if, if for a lot of land Canadians, you know, the symbols of wine or local Canadian wine is local, yep. and we know of our Tidal Bay, and we know of our traditional method sparkling wine, what are some of your, like, what do you think BC does best, or at least the Okanagan does best, and, and, and what's you know the signature for you of the Okanagan? Now, this is a question that is often looked for, because we want to identify something that we know. If it's a Chardonnay, or if it's a Sauvignon Blanc, or a big King Cap, all the places around the world are known for one, two, three different specific items. I would say... If we look at the Okanagan Valley, between north to south, the diversity is so big in that very small area that diversity is actually huh? our key. We're not going to plant the same grape that we do in the south from Asturias to Oliver, up in Kelowna towards Vernon. And the other way around, it, it, it's going to be very challenging. So we make outstanding Pinot Noirs. But at the same time, we could talk about Syrahs and Cabernet Franc. Very small portions mm. of Petit Verdot, but mm. what we're seeing, the quality of Canadian wine has never been better than the day of today. Mm. And that, so yeah, so was that a revelation to you coming from Europe to think to understand how good Canadian wine is because it's yeah. not heavily exported. Yeah, yeah. no, actually, uh, you barely find Canadian wines now more and more so. Also because I know where to look, also because I know what to look for. So you. You might be able to find more Canadian wine on the international market. I see that mm. as part of my job as well. 
I want to go out there. I want to represent the Canadian wine market, and that's happening. Um, it it was amazing to understand how diverse we were, and then what kind of wines and stylistics are coming out. Bit of a joke, but the the, the saying here is we're in the candy land of winemakers. There's no rules or regulations as we find in the old world. We find beautiful blends in which we could play around with grape varietals that grow right next to each other. And they're not an old school Bordeaux blend and they don't have rules and regulations. VQA has its own form of regulations, of course, but it doesn't tell you how to express yourself in the wine. I might be speaking on behalf of the viticulture, I might be speaking on behalf of the winemaker, but what we're seeing is the quality of wine is getting better. Uh, there's a big drive through organic, and organic is really a future aspect for growing and winemaking that we foresee to continue to grow. And the diversity also helps us because we could start like tonight a dinner with beautiful aromatic wines, if not sparkling wines. We slowly migrate into the bigger, bolder whites. After that, back to a Pinot Noir, and we finish tonight with a big, bold, powerful blend. Amazing. If you want to, there's still an ice wine, but it's not just the ice wines that are part of our identity only. Amazing. And and, and you represent and work with a, a, a company of wineries called Iconic Wineries. So tell us a little bit about what who, what are those wineries and okay. why why are they? I mean, it's a very brash almost statement to say iconic wineries of BC, but but a lot I know there's a lot behind that. So tell us a little bit about what are the wineries that are Pose the iconic wineries of BC, and 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 you can be boastful. Why do they deserve that tag? <laughs> um, that's a good question. Uh, I might not be the right person here to completely fulfill the answer. However, how you need to see it is there is a broader picture. When you come to each winery on its own, they've got a personality. They've got their own winemaker. They've got their own winemaking team and viticultural team. They've got lots of things that make them specifically special. However, they're all combined, a beautiful portfolio with the wineries and wines that represent a wider portfolio. So, turn it around. When guests are coming from overseas, international visitors are coming around. We could look after them for two days straight and every day present something new in the world of premium and quality wines, quality experiences that are none alike. They're all above par. They're all something very, very unique. This allows us to showcase the northern, the central, and the southern part of the Okanagan Valley to its extreme. Amazing. And and as a psalm, you're a food and wine lover. I mean, oh, it's yes. just in your blood. Yes. Um, just maybe a closer in, in the sense that you, now you're in Nova Scotia wine country working with, you know, a lot of, what are the ingredients that you love out here? And is there oh, any, any wine styles that you decide you gravitate towards? Oh, there's a, a bit of a classic here, but uh, seafood. Yeah. I'm here uh, only for about, um, what is it? 52 hours, and between breakfast, lunch, and dinner, lobster is included. The chowders here have been absolutely amazing. Uh, the chowder and the chardonnay, that's that's just, yeah, to die for. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I like local foods. I'm a big forager. If it is from greens to, to, to mushrooms to anything you can find, especially if it's very seasonal, uh, it has a drive. And then to come home and pair that with your wines, that's unique. Uh, the title base are very unique out here. The Lacadie Blanc, really part of the identity out here in Nova Scotia. And I foresee that as the world of wine is growing, changing, the quality of wines is being is, is improving. We have so much growth ahead of us. We're just at the beginning of everything. Amazing. Yeah. So uh, I look forward to having uh, the wine and dinner tonight. So, Bram, thank you very much for the Thank interview. you very much for having me.